Hola. Welcome back to the Ugarchua Art Chronicles podcast, exploring the life and the career of painter Paul Ugarchua. In today's episode, we travel all the way to exotic Rio, learning Portuguese and bumping into Pele on the beach. There's quite a big space, isn't there, where, well, uh, really where life goes year. on as usual. I, that's I guess. Right. The, one, the one year it just goes on and on the one year before we head off to South America yeah. Yeah. here in Vancouver in the West End uh, you know they have a little guarderia for the little ones and so um, when I go down there of course in the West End we, we do have at that time it was mainly the Europeans uh, often the sort of born Canadians thought they had to have a house uh, and if they didn't have a lot of money, then they'd have to be outside Vancouver, which we would never do. But um, we love the, as we mentioned before, our apartment because we can come and go as we please. But down in the West End, the first three mothers I meet, uh, Pernell was from Paris and Emilia uh, from Spain. And then Janet was a, a Spanish uh, professor and her husband was from Madrid. So we immediately meet uh, the French and Spanish connection for us and for our children. So this was always uh, yeah, an important right. part of our life as well, the language yeah. <clears throat> to introduce to the kids. Was that a, um, a Spanish-type guarderia, or was, it, um, was that the no, point? It of wasn't. No, it was no, a regular no, state no. one. That, yeah, or just regular. But of course, we yeah. started to get friendly with these... Uh, but then uh, Spaniards and French, and so we ended up with uh, yeah. they were socialising with those guys. Yeah, and, mm. and the yeah. mothers, um, well, they could all speak some French, and they wanted to take French. Like when the kids were playing down at the beach, then uh, Cornell would the give French. us French lessons, and then we'd switch over to Spanish, and mm. everybody wanted to learn, um, you know, another language or continue practicing, you know, the Spanish and French. That's right, and because we were. Planning in a, in about eight months to go to Rio de Janeiro, we also were interested in taking Portuguese. Yeah, that's how we meet. So uh, we meet uh, Paul Janios, who Janus, was the Geneva Language Gene Institute. He was the owner of the Geneva Language Institute, and he spoke forty odd languages. Forty five languages. Forty five languages. Forty five so, languages. Yeah, so we we ended up uh, with him for a, a while. Well, a couple of months before Rio, I, I said to Paul. I had previously gone to the Geneva Language Institute for Spanish, like any time that I was in town or, you know, if I could take pick up extra lessons, I would try mm. to fit that in. And uh, so the first night that we meet uh, Janulus, uh, as I always said, it was like uh, after like five minutes, it was like we'd known each other for years and uh, he he knows Paul's an artist. He within, had an idea. Yeah, he has an yeah. idea. To as a, for a language translator, which in those days, remember, there was no computers that had those translators on. Mm. And he had this idea of using his uh, sentence breakdown yeah, in, six, in six different languages. And, and it was just like a little book. You could yeah. flip the page. And, and it up would, and down. It would change the, you know, the language in five clever. sentences for you. And mm. it was quite fascinating. So we had the idea of designing this for the expo. Well... That night, you know, right. everything's, you know, like yeah, first spontaneous we're combustion. In Portuguese, that's what we're yeah. first well, we didn't get any in that first night, but <laughs> so we're already at Expo because we knew that, and we're saying, wow, this is terrific. We could call it the communicator. <laughs> the communicator. And he's so excited, mm. but we'll get to that at a later date. But we did put him in the because Guinness we thought records, we were going to do the project with him the mm. Guinness Book of Records, 45 languages. He had to collect all the affidavits that we had to take you know because those to are all this official. little place outside of london just a, that's the guinness book of records that's right yeah. where in oh it had to be gone to london oh yeah yeah to the uk to, yeah you had that's to take their it. main office yeah. of guinness book and is when there we were in london we took it there yeah we him, had all these official got him in the book really? yeah he, okay. was, he owned the language Geneva uh, he Institute. had 80 languages and uh his teachers were from all over the world and they were trained for the courts here yeah. So it was for court interpretation for, you know, whatever. In fact, he had the gypsies. He learned that language, the gypsy yeah, language, imagine. to help the gypsies out defending their, I, I guess, illegal... Yeah, um, yeah. Well, in, you know, in Europe? The, the European here, here, here in Vancouver. Oh, yeah. oh, right. Here in Vancouver. 
How are you exposing your kids, your two kids, to language at an early age? I think you'd got them yes, in, school, was... in preschools or that sort of thing. Is that what was going well, on? Well, right when they come back then, they're only one and uh, just a sec. They're, mm. No, just that. Tal is three and Anton is one, right? One and a bit, so one and at, a half. at that point, uh, like I knew we were going to go to Rio, First of all, we were going to go to Chile, Viña del Mar, and I huh. was thinking of the Spanish language that we could yeah. put the children uh-huh. in the Guarderia because the plan was we would go down to South America for six months, then we'd come back to Vancouver for six months, then we would have one year mm. back in Spain in the Basque country uh, for the children that there. That was when we were uh, to introduce the, the language, language, but, yeah. but uh, we did want to, to introduce into it. Yeah, everything before. <laughs> ah, but be- Chile didn't work out because of the... But we were thinking of, because of Vigna del Mar because it was um, supposedly had a beautiful coast and it supposedly was a tourist go. haven. So uh, yeah. we went... We were going to go there to try that first before we went to Rio. To even even if it worked out, we may not have gone to Rio actually. Yeah. But when we got yeah. to Chile, well, there before, was an uprising going on, the uh, labor union f- yeah, for protests, yeah. and the democracy. guns were being shot in the center of the square. So we were told to not leave the hotel. <laughs> No, but we we did know before we left that. Well, we knew there could be <laughs> some kind of uprising, but not much. Just before we did leave for Rio, we were very fortunate with Mr. Burns. Ah, yes, he paid Mr. For Burns. <laughs> okay. He was a client who he was, was a, a patron who had bought some native works off us. Okay. And this is when he decided he wanted about 10 large pieces. And so small. And, and small as yeah. well. So we figured that was good just before we were on our way to Rio, he which could for... finance the whole trip and everything. So that yeah, was really? great. For all the... Oh, travel, wow. that's for yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. All these little things help. Because well, as soon as we make money, we spend it. It's not like it's <laughs> put in the bank. <laughs> well, this is all for uh, the adventure and the learning and opportunity, yes, the exactly. experience. And, Fantastic. Yeah. So that, that was fortuitous that that just happened yeah. just at the right time. Yeah, yeah. We, would, we would have still gone to Rio, but yeah. it would have been uh, doing it with different credit cards or something I don't know <laughs> it may be <laughs> you're making my, you know you have to make money in many I would directions have had, I would have had this... to actually get out on the street more in Rio and sell no you would never it, do that in well, Rio well, I might have tried it just for a laugh <laughs> <laughs> Could have been she interesting. tries to hold me back. Well, maybe know, for a yeah. laugh. She well, me actually, back. maybe it would have She's been amazing. She's banned, banned me from going out here in Vancouver now. <laughs> maybe it Trouble. would uh, have been incredible. I don't know. Well, it could have been. I might have met some very rich people, That's, Joanne. Well, there's nothing yeah. but wealthy. Well, all I want to do is meet rich people. I don't well, know. You, you think I just <laughs> oh, want to go well, out to meet the bums been... and drink with them? I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> you might have met some dangerous people. That's true. It's possible. Um, there's always, don't worry. There's always dangerous but, but people you, out there. Yeah. I've met, I've met too many of them in my life yeah. <laughs> so we were so off to rio oh right so oh, we're on the plane right which was incredible we were put into first class because there was nobody on the plane hardly except a few people and these um these uh air hostesses took care of the kids and made fuss of them and gave them all kinds of little gifts and presents and oh my gosh it was, they were like they were like having a nanny on the plane you know and so that, and we had slippers. And what did they say us, oh. before we left the plane? Like, oh yeah, <laughs> the pilot came on and said, "Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, you're now arriving in Rio de Janeiro. This is not like any other place." He said, "Watch your wallets. Watch, you know, everything you have." <laughs> Don't he wear jewelry. He said, "When you go to the beach with a towel, you'll probably leave without it." He said, <laughs> That's nice. why we have no. We oh ha- yeah, we nice. have no pictures. On the beach, <laughs> I never took real. a camera anywhere. Because well, you're too frightened to. Yeah. Although, as we say, well, we did get robbed twice, by the way. Yeah, but tiny. Uh-huh. Like we said, they're okay, petty yeah. theft, but we we never felt any no, danger. I mean, no. we were living in the, uh, the most affluent area. It was more right? like a, a snap and beach. grab, you know. So my uh, necklace. I was in the car. That was the and car. And Joanne, this Joanne's fault. This was. Yeah. So we're in the car driving around with our friend who'd flown in from. He'd flown in from uh, Vancouver Ernie, yeah. for the carnival down there. Mm. So we had a rental car and we were driving around with him. And, and Joanne says, oh, look, 
I stopped at a stop sign and this chap was in front of the car and I said, oh, look, he needs help. This guy needs help. Mm. Yeah. So I lower down the window and he comes around and puts his arm in and grabs my necklace and run, runs off. <laughs> Could have been worse, couldn't it? Well, it, was, it wasn't you know. even gold. It was, it was plastic, you know. It, it was one of those expensive. artificial ones. But mm. his friend... Ernie... So my friend says, quick, let's go get him. Are you kidding? I said, no, stay thanks. where you are. I Not said, in Rio. He yeah. t- he Not goes, in the outskirts. He ran around the corner. I said, yeah, we follow him. There's be 10 guys waiting for us around the corner. <coughs> so we just drove off. I felt, I felt... I sort of felt good that it was done in the car where he couldn't do much else except grab and run. Well, what happens is, yeah, you are for the first... We were a little apprehensive for the first time we went out. But that, you know yeah, what? Yeah, you get... there for six months. Yeah, you get so. there for six months. I mean, after the first week, you feel like a local anyway, you know. But yeah. the thing is... Um, and you don't take anything valuable yeah. on you anyway. Yeah, no gold watches. Well, you, like it, that, it just you makes... No, you make nobody sh- does. Nobody you make sure watches. that you're careful. Yeah, we, we didn't wear jewellery or anything. You know, I was sort of happy for a warning like that, that you generally, True. you know, like if you're in other resorts, you may wear some of your jewels or something. Oh, there, sure. There's you a make lot of sure robberies you're not... going on, of course. But when a lot we... of poverty. When we get mm. there, I don't know if we had a hotel the first night, but... Yeah, we did. Mm. So... What we always do is we look for, um, you, you know, the either the yellow pages. We find out where the closest agency is to find an apartment. Hmm. So we always say, you know, we want to be, you know, Copacabana, right in front of the beach. Where the action is. All that. Yeah. That's right. So yeah. anyways, we were just... So the agency found us this yeah. place right in front of... The Copacabana. It was nice. a thousand US a month. And even. in those days, a thousand US was, was, quite, a bit, but, was quite a lot. But, but it was never, perfect. And, and mm. they wanted the money up front for the six months. Ooh, so we yes. had to pay him six thousand. Well, we had Mr. Burns. You yeah, see. you had yeah, Mr. Yeah, Burns. There you are. So we, exactly. yeah, so we, so we gave him six thousand. <laughs> and the funny part of that is, the crazy part of that yeah. is, the, the value of their money after oh, yeah. that depreciated so much mm. that we're like paying 2000 a month in the end with the difference the money would have made you know what i mean well we paid but that's America. why they wanted it all up front no you know? but they wanted only american and only american yeah. that's right oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, of course. not their currency of course it was a wonderful place we had you know three bedrooms massive big actually there was a maid's quarters we never even opened the door yeah, to that that's big. and uh, we didn't <laughs> really? have a maid obviously there was 12 <laughs> guards with some had rifles. Oh, yeah. But you wow. know, they just Half do them that. Were armed. The favelas were right next to Oh, that's door. because, yeah, behind us, which there I were the favelas, nice which thing. were all the hilltops of full of shanty town and everything. Yeah, right yeah there. just down the street. I mean, the they street. picked the best location right by the Sugarloaf and right in front of the blooming oh, uh, yeah. Copacabana Beach. So they're not. Speaking. I always thought it was wonderful that they were there years before. So big deal. They've got. They're right there, the yeah. best property in Rio. And, they're and easy why to, not? They came down and begged every... There was hundreds of people begging, of course. Yeah, but we didn't see... Like, well, you saw them in the street. No, you store. did. That's right. I don't know. They're, they're, the, the thing is, what we thought with, uh, you know, Rio is that, you know, they had the samba and the football, okay? They had a lot of problems, but hmm. they, all yeah. year long... They the football prepared. pacified them with the samba and the football, you Yeah, know? and they prepared all year long for their... Yeah. Carnival. Pele used to play. Used to, used to train all these kids on the front on the beach in front of us. Yeah. Really? And and yeah, and you wouldn't believe how he did it. He had sand. these kids all with a football each, and mm. they had to run in deep sand, a hundred yards back and forwards, kicking this ball in front of them, keeping right. it close to their feet. Right. And you know what I thought? I thought, my God, no wonder those they're like little rabbits when they get onto an astroturf. Yeah. <laughs> Try yeah. running in deep sand yeah. Yeah. with a football in front of your toes, you know. Yeah. But he was doing that every morning. And and really? his wife Shushu. Yeah. He was married to the the blonde. Uh, oh, the TV yeah. star. Yeah, and, she was. Uh, she TV had player. a children's show on uh, every day, and so. Uh, the children after the guarderia, uh, they would watch her every day. But I looked for a guarderia. Of course, it's all in Portuguese. So I did buy Portuguese, you know, little children's books. They had no Spanish books there, everything in Portuguese. And uh, I also had a lawyer that she used to come twice a week and she used to give me lessons in Portuguese, but it's awful close to the Spanish, so it's quite confusing. But yes, I bet. they do understand you when you speak.